name is Bill Hook. I have been a long time director of the Divinity Library, and I am also the deputy university librarian. Good afternoon. We're here at Vanderbilt Libraries, and we're going to talk to Bill Hook about his book loves today. Historian Laura Miller writes that the first book we fall in love with shapes us every bit as much as the first person we fall in love with, and that attachment affects choices we make as an adult. If you can answer some questions for us, we'd love to know more about books you have loved. Like, what was the first book you fell in love with, Bill? I guess is the first book that, that falls in this category is uh, A Wrinkle in Time, which I read in the fifth grade uh, shortly after it was published. In the program, I'm sure you've had these when you were in middle school, where you get this little list of books that you can order for, for cheap, and this is to encourage kids to read. So I, I chose that. I don't even remember why. But it was a captivating book for me. It was the first experience that I could remember of having worlds painted in my mind. And I, of course, also identified with the young son, Charles Wallace, uh, in the story. And so here I'm drawn into the story as if this was who I was. And it's not that I loved that book and reread it many, many, many times, that goes to Tolkien. But it's what turned me into a reader of science fiction. It was a combination of the vivid pictures and the implications about time and space. Uh, and so that led me to a lifelong interest in science fiction. Isaac Asimov, Arthur Clarke, uh, all of the old hard SF guys in the 50s and 60s. But it also then led me very shortly after that in the book club ordering to order The Hobbit. I had no idea who Tolkien was. I mean, I was nine, maybe 10. Uh, and that, of course, led to this lifelong uh, devotion to Tolkien and uh, read The Hobbit. And it was probably a year or two after that before I read The Lord of the Rings. But from the time I was 13 until whenever Peter Jackson's movies came out. We, my wife and I both, would reread Lord of the Rings at least once a year. Uh, it, that was the book we fell in love with. I mean, that's just kind of one of the defining connections. And Peter Jackson's films, which were really very excellent adaptations, although all of us nerds would argue that he left out all these important things and changed some things. Um, but I couldn't read The Lord of the Rings for many years because Jackson's actors overrode my internal images of the characters that I had so long developed in my mind. And it was only this past year that I finally was able to sit down and reread the whole trilogy again and not have it be intruded by the characters from the films. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's the book I love. When you reread Lord of the Rings, how do you feel about it now? Oh, it's just, it's the same. I mean, it's still an extraordinary tale. Uh, he did a masterful job of world building. And of course, I've also read the Silmarillion and a lot of his other works. The mythology behind the Lord of the Rings was what he was interested in more than the hobbits. And uh, reading the mythology in the Silmarillion that's not a favorite book, but boy, that makes a link to my theology studies and the whole concept of what a, a fable is and what a myth is. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of connections there. Was there another book that captured your imagination as a reader before college? I read massive numbers of books. Um, I, would, I, would, I would point, I guess, next to Conan Doyle and Holmes legacy. Uh, I've read all of the Sherlock Holmes books and, and actually one of my current new uh, favorites is a series by Laurie King about this young woman, Mary Russell, who meets the older Sherlock Holmes and they team up and she has as bit, every bit an insightful mind as Holmes does and he trains her how to be uh, a detective. So that, that's another one. Does sound great. Is there a book that set you on your professional path? Um, if so, what impressed you about it? So this is the this is the challenging question for me, um, because 
I think I have to answer it's H. Richard Niebuhr's Responsible Self, which is a book about ethics in which Niebuhr sets out his own particular methodological approach to ethics of the, the issue is to find out what is happening and how to appropriately respond as opposed to the classical goal-oriented or rule-oriented ethics. Uh, and how that set me on a professional path is that, that I read this when I was in seminary in an ethics class, which led me to pursue a PhD in ethics, which led me to come to Vanderbilt, which led me to start working in a library. And interestingly, another book that I read in graduate school, uh, Gadamer's Truth and Method, which is about the hermeneutics of understanding, is a, a much more dense and complex uh, text, but it melds with Niebuhr's fundamental question of what is going on, and how do you achieve what Gadamer calls the fusion of horizons between two different perspectives. And in my mind, that melds very closely with what we do as a librarian. When somebody comes with a research question, the first part of the research interview is to find out what is the question, what is really the question that they're asking, and then how do you understand the topic, and how do you bring that together to change your previous understanding, enlightened by the encounter with the text or the resources that you're using. Uh, so I think that hermeneutic question, what is going on, really is kind of a fundamental principle for what I've done as a librarian. Well, thank you. Is, um is there a book that you find particularly important influencing your work now? I, so much of my job now is administrative and personnel management. Um, so the Myers-Briggs book about personality types was revelatory to me in understanding certain types of people that I was having difficulty dealing with as a supervisor. Uh, Strikes Finder is another. But I'm really not a big fan of, of management books or business books. Uh, and it's a library. How could there not be all sorts of books that we're interested in? Is there a book you like to share with friends and family and coworkers? Actually, yes. Um, it's Rabbi Kushner's When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Uh, dealing with tragedy, uh, in our case it was a child with special needs, uh, when a family member dies. Americans don't really know how to deal with death. And Kushner gives some very good insights about what it means to be human in a world uh, where bad things happen. And it's not a reflection. I mean, the problem for many of our friends when we were younger uh, in, a, in a Southern Christian context was if you're good, God lets you prosper. And if something bad happens, that must mean God is punishing you. Well, that's not good theology, but that's the culture. And, and Kushner, coming out of the Jewish tradition, was able to express that in a way that a lot of people that we've shared it with, that it, it, it opens up their eyes, as it did ours, to understand, not understand, uh, but accept a little bit more of the situation that you're going through and how to deal with it constructively. Thank you. Can you tell me about a gift book that you remember fondly? Yes. It's that big book over there, The Autobiography of Mark Twain. It was published in, 19, in 2010 uh, to a great deal of value. It's from the Mark Twain Papers Project, and it's book one of three. And uh, I had read a lot of, of Twain uh, over the years, and so I asked my wife to get it to me, give it for my birthday present, or Christmas, I can't remember exactly which, which she did. And, I mean, it's massive. It's practically the first book that I've had that I can't just read in a chair. It's got to be on a table. And most of my leisure reading over the years has been in bed for the two hours before I go to sleep. And I've dropped more than one book on my face, and that's not a book you want to drop on your face. And it's one of the things that led me to look more seriously at reading e-books on a Kindle. So it's a lot easier to deal with dropping a candle on your face than it is with this size. Definitely. Well, happy reading, and thank you for sharing. Thank you very much. It's been fun.